bits and pieces of it, but I really felt in my spirit tonight, this is a word for this house tonight. And tonight I want to talk to you and speak to you about the purpose of giants. Look at your neighbor, the purpose of giants. Don't hurt yourself. Purpose of giants. Purpose of, no, Kim, you can stay right where you're at. Purpose, purpose of giants. Now, the problem is, is it, do the giants have a purpose? In your life, what kind of giants are you having? Some of you, you know, depression. Some of you, the giants of uh, whatever. You can name whatever. But I want you to realize, is there a purpose? Because in that purpose, it shows us something. So we're going to look at tonight David. Matter of fact, we were in Israel about a couple years ago, uh, about two years now. We were in Israel, and it was amazing. Uh, Curtis asked the uh, tour guide, he said, you know, I'd like to see, I would like to see the valley where David and Goliath fought. Well, guess what? Before we went into Tel Aviv, they took us through the valley that David and Goliath actually fought in. And so it describes it about mountain ranges, but it was a wide valley that they were fighting in. So we're going to look at that tonight, but I want to tell this is a very simple message, but I want to encourage you, and I know who this is for, but I want to encourage you because some of you are facing some giants. And the problem is you don't know how to deal with it, and, or maybe you're saying, well, I'm being overwhelmed by them, and I understand that. But tonight I hope you see and stop the, the lies of the enemy will come down tonight, and you'll begin to see clearly the purposes of giants in your life. So let's look in 1 Samuel chapter 17, start with verse 11, I'm sorry, verse 1, and uh, we'll go through 11, and then uh, tonight I'm going to uh, read out of the message, but this is tonight is out of New King James. All right, let's look. Now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle, and were gathered at the sackcloth. Now the problem was this belongs to Judah. And then what happened, here they were, in, in verse 2, and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and they encamped it in the valley, the valley of Eli. Now here's the, the amazing, that's where we were at. We were going right through that and drawn up in battle array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on the mountain on one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side with a valley between them. Now a champion, champion, look at that, champion. A champion went out from the camp of the Philistines. His name was Goliath from Gath, and his height was six cubits in, in a span. He had bronze helmets, and it begins to describe his armament. I'll, I'm going to do that out of the message because it breaks it down how much pounds this is. So let's kind of run through this. And the thing was, in verse 8, he says, And he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to the line up for the battle? Am I not a Philistine? that you have the servants of Saul, choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. And if he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I win, in essence, prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. Now there is where he's just thrown down the gauntlet. He's saying, whoever wins this battle, the nation will serve. The other nation will serve. The Philistine says... I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that he may fight together. When Saul, uh, when Saul and all Israel heard these words, they were standing up saying, Whoa, praise God, this is awesome. We're going to be able to kick that 12-foot giant down. Woo, 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 woo. It's not what he said. What did they say? Sixteen, and the Philistine drew near and presented himself. This is how long the battle was going on. Forty days, morning and evening. Now listen, let's, listen to, let me give you his, how big this hammer knocker is. All right? All right, this is out of the message. A giant nearly ten feet tall. Now understand, David could have been anywhere between 12 to 15 years old. Now, he's a bad dude. I mean, 20, 10 feet tall, that's, that's pretty good right there. Shaq is seven, so he's three feet tall, taller than him. All right, now watch. Now watch what happens. The Philistines lined the open. Goliath from Gath, he had a bronze, listen to his equipment. He had a bronze helmet on his head and was dressed in armor. 126 pounds of it. That's about how much I weigh now. 
Oh, y'all ain't right. That was my birth weight. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, it's, it's not that funny. Okay. Listen to this. Now, that armor weighed 126 pounds. Then it says, he wore a bronze skin guards and carried a bronze sword. His spear was like a fence rail. The spear tip alone weighed over 15 pounds. His shield bearer, now he was a bad dude, his shield bearer walked ahead of him. And Goliath stood there and called out to the Israelites, why bother using your whole army? Am I a Philistine enough for you? In essence, he's taunting him, and he's saying now he begins to go into the arena of taunting, day, of taunting everybody. Now let me show you a secret. Many of you think it's going to be the great things that's going to take you into the impossible realm. Can I tell you what moved David into greatness? What? What was that again? Faith. Wrong. But it was good, though. I loved it. I love faith. It's wrong. You had to have faith. I know that. What else? Obedience. No. And... <laughs> Courage. What? Cheese. His service. He serviced the cheese. That's exactly right. <laughs> and he had faith with the cheese. Here's what he did. His dad looked at him and says, hey, your brothers are down there fighting. Go take the cheese to the, your brothers and go down there and take the cheese to the captains. So David left the field, and you got all this stuff, a lot of different teachings and trainings in there, but I'm just going to highlight it. He took the cheese to his brothers gave it to the captains or whoever, and then this is amazing because his brother says, what did you come down here to do? And he says, I love this. Now, here's the thing that really catches my attention. He looked and he says, David's brothers looked at him, and then he, they were toning him. They were making fun of this little guy. Now, they're in, in, in Israel, in, uh, in Jerusalem. If you ever seen like a, little, like a little picture type of deal, that is where they have the, the, um, the scrolls, Dead Sea Scrolls. And that's what it looks like. It's a pottery. It looks like that's where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls in one of those pots. Well, in there, they discovered a Psalms 151. 151. Now, we have 150. It did not pass the canonization because it was done early and they found this. But David began to describe himself as a little ruddy boy and how God chose him over his brother. See what I'm saying? Now, in that Psalms 150, they, they attribute to David. And again, it's not canonized, so we, you know, but they attribute to David. But David was sitting there saying, how could God choose me? I'm the least of the least. Look at Gideon. Look at how Gideon, look at what Gideon says about himself. We are the least of the families, and we're the least of the tribes. See, that's what some of you think about yourself, because you've had a past. Ooh, anybody in this room had a past? Oh, gosh, help us. But that's what you think about yourself. I'm the least because I have a past. Well, stand in line. But see, the problem is many of you don't realize that God's chosen you over other things and other people. They pushed him down and put you up because you, your heart is tender and pure because you remind yourself of where God has taken you from. Can I get a witness? You've never forgotten that. And it's not selective children, but the problem is many of you think God can't choose you because I am from the least of the family, and my family is the least in Tazewell County. Don't you realize, oh, we're from Tazewell County, we are, oh, for, I love this one. When I first got, I, got, I came here from Orlando, Florida, please. 18 years ago, Orlando, Florida, I was ministering to 29,000 people in 202 churches. I came up here, and all of a sudden, I heard you talking about a place. Here's what I heard you say. We are from, we're from the county. And I looked, it's like, the what? We're from the county. You are? I thought it was, a, I didn't know what it was. Y'all guys, uh, some, some, some type of disease over there. I'm from the county. Well, I didn't know. I didn't want to go to the county because I found out that the county was a bad place until I started meeting people. And I found out it had nothing to do with the people. It had everything to do with their attitude.
Because some of you thought you were the least of the least and you're from McDowell County, so you're the least of this whole area and you're just a piece of trash because, oh, Pastor Steve, I, I, Pastor Steve, Pastor Steve, oh, Pastor Steve, they call me trailer trash. They call me that too because I live most of my life in a trailer. We'll just be trailer trash together. Tell me something good. <laughs> I know what it means to work. I work three jobs in a day. Can I get 18 hours a day? Can I get a grunt out of you? I clean toilets. No, you did not, Pastor Steve. You are prestigious. No, I'm not. I'm a humble guy. I clean toilets. I clean a theater. I clean a theater at midnight when they closed down to all night. And then I got up and I went to work construction. And then I got up on top of that. Then I went and cleaned another uh, little market somewhere else out in Thomasville, Georgia. I cleaned the floors and toilets. And I learned that. Oh, Pastor, you, you don't look like don't let good looks defy you. <laughs> but I realize who I am in Christ. And it doesn't matter if you're from the county. God still can use you. It said the problem is you bought into the lie like Gideon. We are the least of. I used to be a junkie. I used to do this. I used to do that. And I can't be used by God. And God's going to ask you the question. Who said that? Who told you that? Because, well, everybody did. Everybody did. No, they did not because you got a guy from Orlando, Florida that don't know what it means to be in the county, but knows what it means that God wants to do something supernatural in this community and he can take the guttermost and raise you up to the uttermost. Don't come here and tell me that mess. I was somewhere the other day, man. I, where was I? I was at a restaurant. Some black dude was up there taking my order. I said, man, what you up to, dog? I'm sorry, that's not preacher like is it? I'm sorry, my bad. I really wouldn't do that all places, maybe everywhere I go. Um, I said, man, what you doing, dog? And I just felt in my spirit, this guy's got future written all over him. I said, hey, bro, let me ask you a question, dog. He said, what? I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm studying Japanese. I said, say what? He said, I'm studying Japanese. I said, dude, don't you ever back down. And don't let anybody, because of the color of your skin or anything, don't you dare let anybody steal from you what God has put inside of you. You go and you go and do everything that God has put in. That's the same thing the message with some of you ladies. Well, Pastor Steve, don't you know there's a little ceiling up there? Where? Most of us in your head. You need to break that thing. Break that curse. Well, I'm a woman. God can't use me because, you know, the Bible says they Read what it says in Romans 16, 1, where Phoebe was a servant. You go to Dake's Bible and you'll find out Dake said that word servant is the same thing. She was a minister. She was a deaconess. Don't tell me God can't use you, sisters. Don't tell me that. You say that's where many of your giants. Yours do Watch. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. This dog will hunt right here. Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay. You got to remind yourself next time you're facing your giants. Here is what the lesson is in this situation. Your giants reveal who you are. Watch. Tell me something good. I will. Here we go. Hey. Here we go. Watch what this, this dog will hunt right here. Now, I don't care if he, he ain't got no raccoons out there or nothing. Man, you the dog will hunt right here. All right, watch, 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 watch. Giants reveal who you are. They already know who they are. One giant revealed two characteristics. It was the simple things that moved David to that position for a miracle. It will not be, some of you are waiting for the television ministry and wait. I remember one time I was going to try to pattern my ministry after Billy Graham and we're going to wait for the buses are going to wait as I give an altar call and people are going to come from the balconies down to the front and people are going to wait for them. Number one, we didn't have a balcony and number two, there ain't no buses waiting for nobody. So I had to learn to be myself. You just got to learn, guys. Problem is, you got to realize it's going to be the small things that's going to move you into your miracle. The problem is, many of you are looking for the big things, and God is already positioning you to do something great. But you can't see it because all you, what you, well, I just, oh, I want the Lord to give me a website. <laughs> it's a long story, long story. <laughs> we got one. Oh, we do have one. Listen, 
The thing is, many of you are waiting for God to speak to you that you're going to be on TBN in two weeks. You may never be on TBN, but you've got to be faithful in what you're doing here. Be faithful to keep with the children. Be in faith, because God is a promoter of people. He promotes you from the here to here. He'll take one and raise you up over somebody else. Why? Because you are faithful in the small things. He's not looking for, we want the big things. Look at me, Pastor. I'm somebody special. 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 I'm really special. Oh, give me a break. I've been around clowns. I mean, people like that. Sorry. <laughs> I would love to buy them at the price I think they're, they're worth and resell them. I'll be getting a big profit of what they think they're worth. <laughs> Holy Moses. Ooh, I can preach the message. Man, just shut up and sit down, man. If you're not willing to pick up a towel, shut up. Shut up. Come on, let's go. We're here to serve this community. You're not here to serve me. I'm here to serve you. Well, that's what kind of pastor is that? That's a very good one. You're not here to serve me. I'm here to serve you. We're here. Our team is here to serve you, that we can together reach this community to equip you to do work, to work the ministry. That's what we're here for. You're not here because, oh, I want to, oh, Pastor, I, I just want to supply, I just want to do everything for your vision. Here's my vision. I want to see you become more like Jesus. I want to see you do the work of the ministry. I want to see you excited to go out here and tell people that Jesus Christ is alive and well. Hey, that's what I want. If you want to support my vision, there it is. Let's go for it. Amen. We are sitting there today. Come on, give them some praise. Amen. We are sitting at Bellocinio's Holy Tilitio. It was good. Got myself one of those light, light, light roast beef sandwich. Nine points, but it was well worth it. <laughs> then there was a lady down there I knew, and I just felt in my spirit she needed prayer. And I looked at Kelly, I looked at V, I said, hey, I want to introduce you to somebody. So I called her out from the back and just broke her, her stride. I said, I want to introduce you to this lady. This is a dear friend of mine. And I said, this is, these are two ladies. And I said, God has just transformed their lives. I couldn't be any more prouder of them. And, and all of a sudden, I just started stepping back. These girls, they were laughing and cutting up. It was a spirit of Steve Branch on them all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Woo! Woo! We were sitting, they were up there in the creamery, and we were sitting way down here, and Sonny and I looked at each other. Ooh, they sure are loud. I said, no, I've been thrown out of better funeral homes than this. I want you to know. You see, the problem is, they were ministering, and the more they did, they encouraged each other, and that they would begin to take what they had learned, and they begin to use it and decrypt it because the Father of all comfort comforted them, and they were able to do it. And the more they shared, the stronger they got, the happier they got, because all the strongholds of the enemy begin to shake off of them, and they begin to declare the word over themselves. They were sitting there just ministering back and forth. And what did you do? I sat down and let them do their thing. Because they sat there and that lady, she, we looked at them, I was fixing to walk out and I looked at her and I said, I got to tell you something, sister. She said, what? I said, I want you to know your love and P I am so proud of you and I believe in you. And all of a sudden the next thing I know I saw her just weeping. Why? Because everybody needs to know that people care about you and believe in you and that God has a hope for you. So your giants will expose who you are. Don't believe me? Watch this. Y'all can sit down on this one. <laughs> that was just for Facebook. Thank oh, Lord, everybody's up now. No, they're all sitting down. I just want to, I, I feel like a big-time preacher. I'm bad. <laughs> I just want to be big-time for one time. <laughs> and it feels so good. Quit laughing. This is church. Your face is going to break. You know what the Bible says? In, you know what the Bible says in the first book of I said it, chapter 11, verse 1. Thou shalt not smile, your face will break. And some of you are looking for that chapter right now. The first book of I said it, chapter 11, verse 1. It's not in here, Martha. He's misquoting. Well, I'm reading from the book of Concordance. And so, so y'all will get that tomorrow. Watch. Here's what your giants will reveal. Your giants 
will reveal one of two things. Same thing that it revealed with David and the army. One giant exposed an army of chickens, and one giant exposed a champion. Ah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. Saul never knew he had an army of chickens. Saul never knew it. What you have to understand about your giants, they are not there to destroy you. Let me say it again. You've got to get that deep in your spirit because there's going to be feeling times you're going to feel like they are overtaking me. You're going to have to realize who you are and you're going to have to realize even though you came from wherever you came from and you're the least of, you're the least of, you're not that in God's economy. I don't care how much drug, I don't care if you did more drugs than Walmart has. God still loves you. He's called you. I don't care if you had a, listen, you want to really get particular here? Watch this one. This dog will hunt right here. Did you realize Paul was in jail? Yeah. Yeah. Am I endorsing jail? No, I'm not. Well, what I am endorsing, if you got there, maybe that's what God used to get you, get your attention and say, you don't have to be here anymore. I can set you free because I can take you from the gutter to the uttermost. I can raise you up. And many of you, that's all. Oh, Pastor Steve, what's this? What's this? The woman with the issue of blood. What do we know her by? The woman with the issue of blood. That's all we know. She's been in jail. She has not. She has too. She has not. She has too. She has not. What was she in there for? I don't know. Well, we'll make it up as we go. <laughs> telephone, telegraph, tell Tazzle. Oh, gosh. I put that in the arena. It's none of your business. She did her time or he did his time. What do you care? Oh, 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 Pastor Steve. They may be a drug. If they steal, no, I can no. Some of split your throat. I don't. You know, <laughs> you got a nice one. <laughs> you got to understand. You got to suck it up and realize that they're not there to destroy me. Let me show you something. S some say God is just testing me to see how much faith I have. No, listen to this, no, he already knows that, that all of us have a measure of faith according to Romans. We all have a measure of faith. Let me ask you a crazy question. No, a teacher in giving a test is not there for their sake, but reveals the student standing. He is there, helps the student locate themselves. And when the teacher, when you're going through a test, he's not talking. I think I saw somewhere in Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 18, somebody, some good looking preacher put up a little post the other morning that says he will be silent in his love. And just like the woman who had the demonic daughter that all of a sudden Jesus didn't answer a word, some of us say that's a slap in the face. No, he didn't. He did not. She did not quit in her faith. She went to his disciples, and then she went back to Jesus and said, Jesus, listen, my daughter's vexed with the demon. Canaanite woman, my daughter is vexed with the demon. And it says, one part, it says, and Jesus answered her not a word. But then she went to the disciples, then she came back to Jesus, and Jesus responded, the bread is for the children. And then she shot back and says, yes. But even the dogs, the dogs get crumbs. And she recognized one thing, that the same ingredients in the whole loaf was in the crumbs. And she knew if she could get a crumb, that God could free her. Oh, my goodness. And then Jesus turned right around and says, I have never seen such faith. He was silent in it. See, silence is some of you think that it's hatred. Silence. That's like the teacher. When you're going through something, we always want the teach. The teacher, that'd be cheating, man. He is asking and trying to see what is in you. He already knows what's in me. I mean, you know, he knows what's in him, I mean. So he's teaching us. The teacher is silent and he's trying to get the knowledge from the student back to the teacher. 
Wow. Number B, listen to this. Devils and demons do not have enough power to take you under. I'm so appreciative that y'all went hallelujah on that one. Let me say that again. No devil in hell, no demons have the power to take you down. Heaven would have to fail for that to happen. Heaven would have to fail if Satan took you down. Now, I'm not talking you can't give in. That's the problem. Many of us give in. But for Satan to sit there, do you remember what happened to Job? He, you put a hedge around him. Yes, I have. And I'll lift that hedge. Aren't you glad to know today that God knows your li limits and he knows what he's doing in your life, that God is in control, that you're not going to fail, that no demon in hell can take you down. He can scream, oh, hell, he wants to at you. But there is nothing, nothing, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Hallelujah. Be to Jesus. Whoa! Get that in your spirit for a little bit. Well, Pastor, the devil's after me. Stand up against him because greater is he that's in you than he that is in this world. You've got to remind yourself this very evening. Remind yourself the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. He has given me a giddy-up gear not to quit and not to give up. So we know, I want to quit. No, we don't. That is not how you're wired. You are wired for victory. You are wired for victory. You have been wired for victory. Don't settle for defeat. But I can't beat these drugs. No, you cannot. You're absolutely right. But let me introduce you to one who can. His name is Jesus. And he's bigger than oxy or meth or heroin or pornography or whatever has got you bound up. Be free tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Many of us are satisfied that we're clean now. We're clean. We're clean. Well, guess what? I'm happy for you. And use in how many weeks or months or years. I'm proud of you. But that is not God's purpose for your life, just to be clean. He wants you to be whole and free from all that stuff that's trying to drag you down, to walk in freedom, to open those prison doors and set the captives free. Man, many of us settle so short of the blessings of God. Your demon, those demons are not there. Like a little black sister one time, she was up there and she had children. And she was a single mama and she was in a duplex in Texas. And she would get up and one day she didn't have any food for her children and she sent her kids out. She, would, she had an atheist next door to her. She had an atheist next door to her. She would open the windows and start praying, God, supply food, supply the needs. Her atheist neighbor heard her one morning when she said she was crying out and she had those windows open and she said, oh, Lord, we ain't got nothing for my babies. You've got to come through. You've got to come through. You've got to come through. You've got to come through today. We don't have nothing. When they come home from school, there's going to, and the old atheist started, ah, I got her now. I'm going to go to the grocery store and buy her some groceries. So he went to the grocery store and bought her a porch full of groceries. <sighs> she rang the door. He rang the doorbell, stood behind a tree, and all of a sudden she opened that door and she began to rejoice. Praise God. Yes, look at what you've done, Father. Thank you, Father. The atheist thought he was me a smarty pants. He jumped out behind the bush and said, Ah, uh -uh, no, 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 your God didn't do that. I did that. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, she looked at him and said, Oh, Lord, I want to praise you for this food. And you even let the devil pay for it. Hallelujah. Wow. Number three, God's tools to release us into a greater dimension. Those giants release us. And let me say this, David never was released until the giant was, he appeared. David never was released his kingship anointing until the giant appeared. <laughs> oh, wait a minute.
Watch. Watch. Pastor, I can't handle this anymore. Watch this. I can't handle this. I'm beyond my limits. You said you're not going to put more on me than I can bear. I'm, I'm questioning that, Father. Stop a second. Listen, listen, listen. You, when the giants appeared, that is when David's anointing was released. Been there all the time on that shepherd's hill, but he was training him to have a heart for God. He was training him, teaching him to worship and praise. Worship and praise. He was teaching all this warfare. But when he faced that giant, he looked and said, God gave me a lion and a bear, and you shall be just like one of them. Now watch. Let me show you something. You ready for this one? Your giants has revealed something inside of you that you didn't think you could do it. Six months ago, six months ago, the things you're facing would have taken you out. But now you're standing under it. And you, six months ago, it would have taken. When your giant appeared, all of a sudden God says, I have given you the strength. If you take a step back and look how far you've come, you can begin to rejoice and realize that God's word is true. He's, he's now taking you from step to step, from glory to glory to glory. He's raising you up to a new place. And listen, let me say something to you. That new level always brings a new devil. No, that didn't... Uh... Ay, 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 What could have taken you out six months ago is not even phasing you anymore. Not even phasing you. You're blinking at it. Is this all you got, chump? What God has shown you, it was taken six months. He showed you with Him you can. Woo! Good preaching! Lastly, Curtis or Kelsey, you, could you go get Bethany or Caleb, one of y'all? I don't care. She's, she's back here doing some stuff. Caleb, can you play something on this, this imitation ivory keyboard? Plastic. This is going to be the cherry on the top of this message. You know, give me that corn and I don't care. What's that song? Oh, gosh. Of something. You got to get this in your spirit, guys. This one is, you got to open your heart up and really get this. People will never do giant things without fight facing the giant. Say it again. People will never face, never do giant things without facing giants. We always want to bypass the giants, don't we? Just like the children of Israel when they got up to the Red Sea. It says the chapter before that, the Holy Spirit said to one, read the chapter before that. And I started reading it. I was like, wow, this is crazy. It says they could have gone a different way. It was shorter, but they would have to fight. And God says, I'm not going to take them that way because they want to go back to Egypt. God thought being chased by the Egyptians and standing at a Red Sea was a lot easier than fighting. That just blows my mind. See, we want the easy way. You don't know what is easy. You know what I'm saying? We want the easy. We want the shortcut. There is. You don't want a shortcut when it comes to the body of Christ. Because if you start cutting corners on your faith in Jesus Christ and your zeal and your heart and your passion, you'll crumble and fall when it comes down to the pressure. You want to face those giants with your head up and you begin to speak to that giant and say, just like David did. David looked and he says, 
This uncircumcised circumcised Philistine shall be just like the bear and the lion that God gave me. You have come and you have defiled the living God of Israel. How come these other chickens didn't say that? They were coward. They were hiding behind everything they could because they knew it. I love this. I love this. I love this. It says David picked up the sling, took the stones, and it said he ran towards, not just, it didn't just say Goliath. He ran towards the army of the Philistines. Some of you were shooting. How come David hit that guy? Because he was too big to miss. Because the hand of God, with all that army went on, the only place he had vulnerable was right here. And that is what he hit with the hand of God. Whack! He went down. Boom! And when he did, they knew that the challenge was this. Whoever wins is going to have to, the other nation is going to have to serve. I want to tell you a secret. David knew how to get ahead. <laughs> Proverbs, Proverbs 24, 16. For a just man falleth seven times and raise it up again, but wicked shall fall into mischief. We spend all of our time telling, telling our mountain how big our, we've been telling God how big our mountains are. I got a big mountain, I got a big mountain, I got a big mountain. Well, we need to speak to our mountain and introduce him to our big God. We got it all backwards. We've been talking. I got a big mountain. I got a big mountain, God. Don't you understand? Big I know your big mountain. I'm the teacher up here. Hello. I'm the teacher. Hello. Now trust me. I don't want to. Trust me. I'm going to be silent here a little bit. It's not for that I don't love you. It's not that I'm not here. I am here for you. My daughter, my son, I love you so much. Because one day I was struggling um, in Lake City, Florida. I was a youth pastor at Calvary Temple. And the hell that I was going through, I've never experienced. I thought Christians were supposed to get to be together and have a great time. Ooh, was I wrong. Ooh, was I wrong. I remember one day I got up there and I started crying out to God. I said, God, why is this so hard? Why? And that day I gained, and I'm going to share this revelation with you, and, and maybe it'll help somebody else besides me. Because it transformed my life when I was, I think, a 17 or 18-year-old guy, a youth pastor in Lake City, Florida, away from home in North Carolina. Here's what the Holy Spirit spoke. When I cried out one day, I was belly aching to God. Anybody besides me ever belly ache to God? You know you're going to lose that battle. <laughs> And I did. Because I cried out one day. I said, what are you trying to do, kill me? He said, yes. <laughs> and yes, he was. Because it was my flesh that was still alive and crawling. It didn't like to be dead. One day I was crying out to God. I said, God, what are you? I feel like I'm in a dry cleaner and you're trying to clean me. He said, yes, yeah, Steve. This is what he spoke to me. Maybe it'll encourage some of you. Here's what he said. He said, St he said Steve. He said, Steve, I am preparing you for eternity to be with me. You know what I got that day? You know what I got? I got eternal vision. Because all I was seeing is what I was going through. All I was, all I was seeing was the trees and all the things. But he was showing me beyond. He said, Steve, I want you to walk with me on the streets of gold. He says, I'm preparing you to live with me forever. So that morning at that altar, that morning I was walking in Calvary Temple there in Lake City, Florida. I was sitting there and the Lord showed me a revelation that he is, loves me enough to prepare me to send me and bring me through stuff to get the mess out of me so that one day I can live with him forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah be to Jesus. There ain't no giant can take me down. That day I got eternal vision. My whole perspective of life changed. I began to see that he is preparing me to live with him forever. 
I fell in love with Jesus for the very first time like I never had fallen in love with him before. Chess champion, international chess champion. He was over in London, I believe it was London, England. His, he had an entourage, and one of the things that they wanted to do because he had won this international chess champ, whatever they call it, chess champion, they were taking him and his entourage through, through different art museums. They came up to this one piece, and the name of, listen to the name, the name of the piece of art is called Checkmate. Stay with me, Checkmate. Now, when you hear that word, the game's over in chess, chess mate. He looked and he says a huge painting. And on this one side over here was a man with his face and his hand and his face in his hands like this. Just you could tell that just something he was so troubled. But on this side was the devil himself, and he was leaning back laughing. The tour guide explained who and all the different things. And he looked and he said, um, we're gonna move on to the next painting. Well, everybody except the international chess champion went. They said his entourage went to another painting down the, down the hallway, and they didn't notice that the chess champion stayed. And here's what he was doing at that painting. Now, if any of you have ever seen a chess player, what he's doing is counting the moves. When he came back, the, the tour guide saw that he wasn't there. He said, sir, you need to stay with us. We are here, and we just, you know, please move along with us. And then the guy stopped him, the chess champion, said, sir, either you have to change the name of this painting or change history. He said, why? He said, because of the few moments you were gone, I counted the moves. Now listen to this. I counted the moves. And then he said this. The king has one more move. So in your life, it may feel like checkmate. But I got news for you. The king has one more move. It ain't over. It ain't over. It ain't over. Oh, somebody's got to get that and begin to prophesy that over yourself. It ain't over. 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 He done brought me this far. He, he's not gonna. He's not gonna leave me now in the middle of this pond. He's gonna teach me to swim, and my enemies don't know how to swim. Hallelujah. He's gonna lift me up and bring me over to that new place, and immediately I'll be where God's called me to do what He's called me to do, and immediately. Wow. God has one more move. It ain't over. It ain't over. You're going to have to remind yourself, it ain't over. Ain't no devil in hell can take me down through the blood of Jesus Christ. Ain't no devil in hell. He couldn't take him down. He couldn't take Jesus down. He went down to the gates of hell. He began to understand that Jesus is greater than anything you have to throw at me, Satan. He even says, I have put you under my feet and my children's feet. It ain't over. What are your giants exposing you as tonight? Champion or a chump? Little pastor, I don't want to fight. Oh, some of y'all are redneck enough as anybody. Y'all just fight for anything. Drop a hat. I'll wear the hat and drop it myself. I'll dunk your ass out. Come here. <laughs> but when it comes to your faith, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to hurt Satan's feelings. <laughs> yeah, right. I think Jesus has already hurt his feelings. He stripped him bare. You see, Jesus was naked on the cross, but it says he stripped him before the whole universe. I don't want to hurt the devil's feelings. No, you don't have. You're giving up. Let's go. Suck it up. Let's go. Put your put put your big boy pants on. It's time to for battle because we got a community here of drug addicts that need to hear Jesus Christ as Lord. And I don't care who you are, that He can save you from the gutter to the uttermost. He wants to put families back together. He wants to put marriages back together. He wants to take people off their deathbed and let them know that there's hope tonight because our King has one more move. It ain't over. Come on, get on your feet and give him some praise tonight. 
Hallelujah! Across this room, across this room, some of you right now have gone through the battle of your life, and that's okay. I hope it showed you tonight the teacher never talks through the... He's not there for him what he's to know. It's what you need to know. He will teach you. The Holy Spirit is inside of you. And He will teach you all things how to win this battle. Now, sometimes we get overwhelmed, but we've got to listen to the Holy Spirit. That means we need to get into the Word and find out what it means to fight. And you will not feel it at times. You will not. You're not going to... Oh, I'm going to... You're telling me to... Fake it. I'm not telling you to fake it. I'm telling you to faith it. I'm telling you to pick yourself up and say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I don't feel nothing, but I'm not going on my feelings. I'm going on the Word. I will exchange the spirit of heaviness with the garments of praise. I will bless the Lord always. If you're waiting for a feeling, you're going to be way down the road. Sometimes you're just going to have to suck it up, buttercup. You've got to get tenacious. You know why the bulldog has a nose pointed up? So when he grabs a hold of something, he don't have to let go because he can breathe when it's, his nose is up. Some of you need to get tenacious. Bike! Ah! Ah! I ain't giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm not going back. Ain't no devil in hell. Ain't no devil in hell because greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. I'm not going back to drugs. I'm not going back to this lifestyle. I'm not going back here. I'm not going back there because I am a different person. I have been born again and I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah be to Jesus. that real stuff, that championship wrestling, all of a sudden, the big boy is beating down, blood coming. He just jumped off a four-story building and went into the ring, and they pounded on each other. He's sitting there, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the cameraman knows when. All of a sudden, they look at his little finger. Ah, oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, a hand. Next thing you know, he comes up, and he starts whooping the referee and everybody in the, in the whole stadium. Can I get a witness? That man comes back. You got a great coming back story, don't you? Some of you coming back. How do you know? Because I'm still moving. I got breath in me. How do you know I got victory? Because I got I, you got you got breath. As long as you have breath, you have hope. Ah, devil, you may not be able to see it, but my finger's moving. You ain't got me down. You didn't whip me. You didn't beat me. You can throw whatever you want to at. Because I, I know, I know something tonight. Because I am not a chimp or a chump. I am a victorious champion tonight in Christ Jesus. Now, Lord, across this auditorium, for those who are walking through the fire tonight, there may be many of them here. That's fine. There's no, that's not condemnation. And that so many times the devil wants to tell us because we're doing something wrong. I say, no, it's not what we're doing wrong. It's what we're doing right. If the devil, <laughs> so many of us think, it's what I'm doing wrong. I'm doing something wrong. No, what you're doing is you're praying. You're getting the word. You're coming to church. You're going to meetings. You're doing everything you know to do. You're standing in the word. You're declaring the word. That's, that's what he's trying to steal because he realizes if he can get your eyes off the prize, he's already whipped you. We are not coming off the wall. So for this men and women, my brothers and sisters, if there's those in here tonight, Kelsey, if you could cut this off. If those in this room tonight, those who are watching us by Facebook, thank you so much. If you need prayer, just lift up your hand. I'm going to pray with you. We're going to bless, bless you right now. Pray over you. Father, you see these hands. You know exactly what they're going through. You know right now across this auditorium, the struggle they face. You know what they're going through. It could be a business, it could be family, it could be, it could be their personal.